more. Let's go straight to the White House and correspondent Philip Crowther. Philip, what's the latest? We're still waiting to see whether Rod Rosenstein actually appears at the White House. There are, there are cameras now on that side entrance to the West Wing where Rod Rosenstein, in theory, would be entering to meet the chief of staff, John Kelly, but he hasn't been seen yet. And we don't know at this point whether, in fact, today is going to be the day that Rod Rosenstein either decides to resign or is fired. There are different reports from different U.S. media on that right now. But it appears that today might very well be the last day for Rod Rosenstein as the Deputy Attorney General. None of this is confirmed at this point. That would be from a White House statement or a Department of Justice statement that simply does not exist at this point. But there are many reasons why this is very believable, and that is because there was that article last week, last Friday, by the New York Times that the U.S. president doesn't usually believe, but this time he might have believed what was reported there, that Rod Rosenstein might well have offered to wear a listening device, a recording device, to record conversations of the chaos inside the White House, and that he might have discussed with other aides invoking the 25th Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. That's the one that allows the cabinet to potentially remove the president of the United States because he is considered unfit for office. There is more to this, of course. Rod Rosenstein right now is the deputy attorney general. He is also, as you said, the man who is overseeing the Russia investigation. Why is it him? Well, because the attorney general, Jeff Sessions, had to recuse himself because of the role he played during the Donald Trump campaign. This would be another firing of those who are responsible for that Russia investigation. Remember, the FBI director, James Comey, he was the first one. And it comes at what you could call a turning point for that investigation, what with that guilty plea by Donald Trump's former campaign manager, Paul Manafort. Yes, and that is something that the White House didn't expect and that U.S. President Donald Trump also was not expecting, that Manafort, his former campaign manager, would flip, so to say, that he was going to speak to investigators and directly to the special uh, counsel, Robert Mueller. That was a surprise in the White House and something that certainly uh, led to a lot of nervousness within the ranks at the, in the West Wing. Uh, that's one of the reasons, maybe, why the U.S. President wants to get rid of this investigation more than ever. He sees it as a cloud over his presence. He also sees it as being entirely unfair, has always described it as a witch hunt, something that is led by Democrats, even though Robert Mueller is in fact a registered Republican. But this is a White House that has had enough of this investigation, and the U.S. president certainly wants it to go away. There are essentially two ways that this investigation can go away. One, it's completed by Robert Mueller with his conclusions as to what kind of uh, uh, collusion there might have been between the Donald Trump campaign and the Russian intelligence services. None of that is known at this point, and that is one of the reasons why this investigation was put in place in the first place. The other way of getting rid of this investigation is, of course, for the U.S. president to essentially close it down. And this would make it that little bit easier for him, getting rid of the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, because he has always been a defender of Robert Mueller. He has always said that this is an, inve an investigation that should definitely come to a normal end, that it could, should come up with some final conclusions by the special counsel, and that it should not be interfered with or stopped by the U.S. president. And uh, reactions coming in from the former FBI deputy director, Andrew McCabe, saying he's deeply concerned uh, by the reports. Again, we don't know yet what's uh, going to happen, uh, whether or not there is that meeting uh, confirmation that there is that meeting going on at the White House to either fire or to uh, receive the resignation of uh, Rosenstein. Philip, just it, it's so hard for people who aren't in the United States to understand any of this. Trump on a daily basis bashing his own head of the Justice Department, who yet stays in the job, ditto with the number two. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it? And it's something that we're, of course, not used to here either. We are now after uh, the start of the Donald Trump presidency because he does criticize members of his very own re administration repeatedly. The attorney general, Jeff Sessions, is the one who receives the most criticism, open criticism on Twitter or in person from the U.S. president, but still is not fired by Donald Trump. Still, Jeff Sessions does not uh, decide to uh, retire from his position. The same goes for many other members of the administration. They've had to uh, stand, uh, stand strong and stay in their position. The same goes for Rod Rosenstein, the 
Deputy Attorney General, who got that position and wants to keep it, of course, and sees it maybe even mm. as his responsibility toward the United States to remain in that position, despite all that criticism uh, from the U.S. president. This is the U.S. president who goes up against the institutions in the United States. He goes up against the FBI, against the Department of Justice and other departments uh, within the U.S. government, for example. He's testing them. Uh, and maybe many of those who might be fired in the future, like Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, well, they know that that would be something very, very dangerous for the U.S. president to do. We're not yet in a constitutional crisis here in the United States, but there are many who are saying that if the U.S. president goes on to fire more and more people who might be part of an investigation into uh, how Russia influenced the election, well, then that's the position the United States might at, at some point uh, be in. Uh, and that is also why mm. many of those who are criticized all the time by the U.S. president decide to stay in their positions. Philip Crowther reporting live from Washington. Many thanks.